Good evening, everyone. Well, that's better than Sunday mornings anyway. <laughs> it's good to have you all here with us tonight. We're glad that you've come to uh, listen, to enjoy, to share with us in our Christmas program. Uh, lots of singing, lots of, well, not lots of, but a little bit of little children's stuff and different things that are going on. So we hope you'll all enjoy it. I uh, hope it's pleasurable to you and that it'll put a big smile on your face. That's the big thing. So let's open with a word of prayer. Father, thank you for uh, the joy of Christmas that you bring to our hearts and to our souls. Thank you for uh, just when we think of Jesus in a manger, a smile just comes on my face. And I think of all of the people that bowed down to worship him even as a baby. And I pray, Father, that you would be with us tonight as uh, everyone takes part as they sing or as they read or whatever it is they do, Father, they're doing this out of praise and honor to you. And we just ask that you would be glorified by it and that uh, it would be something pleasing in your sight. And we ask this in your precious and holy name. Amen. All right, Joyful Noise is going to come up and lead us in a congregational hymn. And then they have two more songs they're going to do after that. So please stand and join us. Our choir members, Margaret, is a wealth of information on hymns, and she managed to find one that I'd never heard before. And it goes way back, and we're going to do it for you right now. Hmm? Who is he in yonder stall? Who is he in yonder soul at 
at whose feet the shepherds fall. Who is he in deep distress, fasting in the wilderness? Tis the Lord, a wondrous story. Tis the Lord, the King of glory. At his feet we humbly bow, crown him, crown him, Lord of all. Who is he? Bless for his words of gentleness. Who is he to whom they bring all the sick and sorrowing? Tis the Lord, a wondrous story. Tis the Lord, the King of glory. At his feet we humbly bow. Crown Who is he that stands and weeps at the grave where Lazarus sleeps? Who is he the gathering throng greet with love, triumphant song? Tis the Lord, the wondrous story. Tis the Lord, the King of glory. At his feet we humbly fall. Crown him, crown him, Lord of all. Oh, every midnight, who is he? Praise in dark Gethsemane. Who is he on yonder tree? Dies in grief and agony. Tis the Lord, the wondrous story. Tis the Lord. The King of glory, at his feet we humbly fall. Crown him, crown him, Lord of all. Who is he that from the grave comes to heal and help us save? Who is he that from his throne rules through all the world? Tis the Lord, a wondrous story. Tis the Lord, the King of glory. At his feet we humbly fall. Crown him, crown him, Lord of all. Now a little change of speed. child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping who angels greet with anthem sweet you all shepherds watch our keeping this this is Christ the King whom shepherds Guard and angels sing. He seeks to bring him Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Why lies he in such mean a state where ox and ass are feeding? Good Christian feed. Hear the silent word is pleading. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of King 
to own him the king of kings salvation reigns that loving hearts enthrone him this, this is Christ the king whom shepherds guard and angels sing he seeks to bring him Lord the faith the son of Mary in days of old it was prophesied that the Christ child would come. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child, and will give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. But you, Bethlehem Ephrata, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins were from of old, from ancient times. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Five centuries later, in the fullness of time during the Roman Empire, the Apostle Matthew wrote, This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her 
until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. It's a little bit different on First Noel. I always give a disclaimer. So anyway, but it might be a little different. The First Noel The angel did say Was to certain poor shepherds in fields where they lay In fields where they lay Lay keeping their sheep On a cold winter's night That was so deep Noel, Noel Continued both day and night, saying, No, well, no, well, no, well, no, well, no, well, born your sucking. took its rest and there it did it did both stop 
band's day Right over the place The place where my Jesus lay Then enter in those wise men three fully reverently upon their knee and they offer there in his holy presence their gold their myrrh the frankincense and they sing Noel, 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 Noel. Born is the King of Israel. One more verse. Let us all sing, sing with one accord. Sing praises to our most heavenly Lord. He hath made heaven and he hath made the earth. And with his blood Oh, mankind, he has bought Noel, 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 Noel. Born is the king of When 
temptation comes my way when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay Lord I need you oh I need you every hour I need you my one defense my righteousness oh God how I need you you're my one defense my righteousness oh God how I need you thanks for coming up and we're going to see if we can See, learn something about Christmas today. This story <clears throat> is about the Hill family. There was mom and dad, and, and then there were their children. Robert was the oldest, and he was about 12. June was nine, and Jane was seven, and Tom was five, and the very smallest girl was Gloria, and she was three years old. They lived in a small city, kind of, I think, kind of the size of Swift Current, you know, not huge, but pretty big. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> the children all had chores to do. Do you have chores to do at home? You know, mom says, make your bed or at least straighten it up and clean up your toys and, uh, you know, just help with it getting the table set and a few things like that, just like a normal family. You know, that's what the, they were, a f normal family. But a week before Christmas, Dad said, I think let's, I'd like you all kids to come into the living room. I've got something to tell you. And he didn't look very happy. And he looked at Mom, and Mom didn't look very happy either. They wondered what was going on. It's just... You know, they were having their school holiday, Christmas holiday already, and everything should be, you know, just all excited about Christmas. And Dad said, you know, uh, the place where I work, the factory that I work, they've kind of slowed down, and I'm only working three days a week, not as much as I usually do. And then Tom and, and Jane got sick last week, and we had to go see the doctor and buy medicine, and and if that wasn't enough, the furnace stopped working, and we had to get a repairman in to fix the furnace. And, and uh, he, <clears throat> he just didn't look very happy, and uh, he didn't know what else to say. Mom says, you know what Dad is trying to say is, there's no money this year for Christmas presents. The kids just sat there for a while. And Robert, the oldest, said, What? I'm not going to get new ice skates. And June and Jane and Tom all said, no solar skates for me, not a dollhouse, not race cars, nothing. And little Gloria looked down at her old brown shoes and she says, no new shoes for me. No, no, not, nothing. I'm sorry, Dad said, I'm really sorry. And they were all kind of down because you know how we all look forward to, you know, pretty exciting presents under the tree and that. But before going to bed that night, <clears throat> all the children went into Robert's room. He was the oldest, remember? And Robert said in a quiet voice, I've been thinking about Mom and Dad. They're really sad that they're not going to be any presents. But I think I know how we can make them better. How, they all said. Well, we'll make presents for each other, he said. Why should we need money? It's Jesus' birthday, not ours. And all the kids agreed. So they decided that they would make presents for everybody. So early the next morning after the kids had done their little chores, you know, helped clean up the breakfast dishes and made their beds and everything else, they got together a lot of supplies. They got pencils and 
uh, crayons and paper and glue and scissors and they found some old magazines and that that they could cut out some nice pictures and then they started busy making presents. They kept all this a secret from mom and dad and every time or they had some time when they had finished their chores and, and that they would get it, go into Robert's room and they would cut and glue and paste and make all kinds of things and they kept it all a secret from mom and dad and when they had made something and they weren't finished and they weren't you know they'd always hide it underneath Robert's bed or in the clothes closet or something like that so mom and dad wouldn't see it well <clears throat> dad came home from work on Christmas Eve and he had a bit of a smile on his face because he bought he says, I went to the lot where they sell Christmas trees, and I talked to the man that sells them, and I wondered if he had a small Christmas tree still there. And he's, because, and the man said, of course. What did this? Oh, is that right, hey? Okay. Oh, oh, there's a mosquito. Okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> there's a fly flying around. That's right. <laughs> Anyhow, Dad said, I talked to the man that works on the lot where they sell Christmas trees, and he says there was a little tree left, and he sold it to me for just two dollars. So he said, we'll put it up, and they put it up, and they put all the lights on it, and he says, but you know what? There's not going to be any presents under the tree. And you know what? The kids all had a big smile on their face when they were helping decorate the tree because they knew something that mom and dad didn't know. So <clears throat> that's when, <clears throat> after they had finished decorating the, the tree, the kids all went into Robert's room and out they came with their arms full of presents. There were presents under the tree for everybody. And here is a picture of them. <clears throat> There's Dad and Mom and Robert and June and Jane and Tom and little Gloria. They're all there with all their presents. They had made all these presents and they were just, they brought them and Mom and Dad just looked. We didn't know this was going on, they said. And the, the kids were all excited. This was really special and had all these presents under the tree. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. And you know what? There was <coughs> pictures that they had colored. There was a flower ma vase made out of a jar. They just decorated a jar, and it could be for flowers. There were waste paper baskets they had made from a small plastic pail, and they had decorated it all up and made a waste basket. They used a soup can. You know a soup can? And they had taken the wrapper off and put other kinds of pictures on it. And that was to, pull, to hold pencils in there. They had thought of everything, and there was something for everybody. And you know what? Gloria's scuffed up brown shoes, they polished them nice, and they almost looked kind of new. They looked so good. Well, the following day was Christmas. And <clears throat> each of the kids helped Mom in the kitchen to get dinner ready. It wasn't a turkey, but it was a nice chicken. And mom had been busy making things on her own, in her own special way, like moms do. They can somehow, moms can do all kinds of things with a little bit of stuff, and they can make special stuff. There was stuffing and fluffy mashed potatoes and a special dessert for everybody. And then kind of around mid-morning, the chicken was smelling pretty good, and everything was done in the kitchen. And Robert said to mom and dad, why didn't, Mom and Dad, why didn't you come and sit down by the Christmas tree? We have, uh, the kids and I have practiced telling the Christmas story, and each one of us is going to tell a part of the Christmas story <coughs> this Christmas morning. And Robert started talking about a long time ago, long before Christmas, how the prophet Isaiah had said that there would be a baby Jesus born. It, in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, it says, for unto us a child is born, 
unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Then it was June's turn to say something. And June told about how many years later, Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem because the governor had said that everybody had to go to his own city to be counted and taxed. It was a long trip to make most of the way, walking most of the way. And when they finally got to Bethlehem, they couldn't find a place to stay. All the motel rooms and other places were all full. At last they heard they had to stay in a barn. Now, just think of that. Stay for the night in the barn. Have you ever been in a barn? Mm -hmm. You haven't? Mm, you need to visit one. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll understand the story better. Because sometimes uh, it's kind of uh, smelly in the barn like the animals, and it's not perfectly clean. And <clears throat> that's where uh, they, Mary and Joseph could go <clears throat> to stay in the barn. <clears throat> Jane then, it was Jane's turn to tell the story. She went on to say that Jesus was born that very night in the barn with our barn animals all around them. <clears throat> and Jesus was laid in a manger, the baby, newborn baby Jesus. Tom continued the story saying there were shepherds in a field close by who were taking care of their sheep. Suddenly an angel came to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were afraid. Now I brought a picture of, oh here I have, there's the shepherds. And there is the light from God's glory shining on them. <clears throat> and they were, it was dark out and, and they were just afraid. They had never seen anything like that because they had never heard, had an angel come and visit them while they were taking care of sheep before. <clears throat> and the angel said to them, don't be afraid, I'm bringing you good news. Because the Savior has been born in Bethlehem. And you're going to see, and he's lying in a manger. And then all of a sudden, the whole sky was filled with angels. And they were all saying, and the kids said this all together. They said, the angels said, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And then the shepherds hurried together and they went and <clears throat> left their sheep and went to find the barn in Bethlehem and see the baby Jesus. And when they knelt, they knelt by, by, the, by the manger where Jesus was, and they worshipped Jesus, and that's where they were worshipping Jesus. I don't know, the Bible doesn't tell this, but I kind of wonder if maybe the shepherds took a nice lamb with them and gave it as a present to them. I kind of think they did. I think they really thought that would be the thing to do. <clears throat> this was this was the end of the story and they had this is as far as the kids told the story how the shepherds went to see baby Jesus when the Hill family sat down for their Christmas dinner dad said you children helped us think about Jesus and loving each other this Christmas let's thank God from the for the very best Christmas we've ever had they all bowed their heads and that thanked God for Jesus and all the wonder of Christmas, how the angels came and everything. God thanked, uh, the Father thanked God for their children and how they had helped them so much that Christmas time and they had a very good time. You know, Christmas is a really good time. We like to have, go to see Grandma and Grandpa, don't we? We like to see aunties and uncles and cousins and friends. We like to eat all those good goodies at Christmas time. You know, the candies and the chocolates and the nuts and all, all the things that mom makes. And we like the presents. We like to see all the decorations and everything. But the most important thing, it's not about us. It's all about Jesus. And what Jesus would like us to do is to say, I love you, Jesus. And Jesus would like to say us to say, thank you, Jesus, for coming to this earth. Because when Jesus came to the earth as a baby, he grew up and he was a man, right? And he did, he healed people, 
and he helped people, and he gave, fed people. But Jesus came and he died on the cross to save us from our sins. And when we think about why we have Christmas, we also think that Jesus came and he loved us so much. And you know what the best Christmas would be for all of us? If we told Jesus how much we loved him and asked him to come into our heart. And you know, we'd have the very best Christmas we've ever had, even if we didn't get any presents. And that's our story for this evening. Thanks for listening.
on after the kids. I mean, really? They even have better memory than I do. Um, this song comes from, well, it was actually written down in the 1800s, but it's a Negro spiritual that had been hanging around the mountains in uh, North Carolina for quite a while. And I'm hoping that you will stand up and, and uh, help me out with the chorus when we get there. Go tell it on the mountains, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountains, till Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching o'er silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. The mountain side, Jesus Christ was born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountains, over the hills, and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lonely manger, the humble Christ was born. And God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountains. Over the hill and everywhere, go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountains, over the hills and everywhere, go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Thank you. Oh, this has been a good night already. A little song in my heart. Everybody's loving the singing. Speaking of songs, um, the special time that we rejoice in celebration, um, we sing Christmas carols, which I enjoy rather well, and you do too, obviously. Um, but one of my absolute favorite ones is called Instrument of Peace. This prayer was written by St. Francis of Assis, set to music. The message it gives speaks to God's promise and salvation and our desire to share God's love. I'll read you the lyrics in case you're unfamiliar. Where there is hatred, let me bring love. Where there is doubt, let me bring faith. Where there is falsehood, let me bring truth. Where there is pain, I'll comfort you. Where there is silence, let me sing praise. Where there is despair, let me bring hope. Where there is blindness, let me bring sight. And where there is darkness, let me bring light. And with these words I speak, grant that I may not seek to be heard, but to hear to be consoled, but to console. Not to be seen, but to see. To be loved, but to love. So when we give love, we will receive. When we forgive love, we'll find reprieve. It is in dying that we'll be released. Make me an instrument of peace. Make me an instrument of peace, yes, indeed. This song has touched my heart because it celebrates our role of discipleship 
and how we are to achieve caring for our brothers and sisters. It is important to celebrate the birth of our Lord, but it is, but it is his promise that is the true gift. So what does this mean to me? This song encourages me to be used as God instrument, a channel of stewardship sending a beautiful message. It also serves as a reminder to carry on with this the whole year through. At Christmas time, our hearts are full of joy, compassion for others, and a time for giving. It is my hope for you that these words would be kept in your heart all year through. Evan likes this song so much, she's going to sing it for you. Where there is hatred, let me break love. Where there is doubt, let me break faith. Where there is falsehood, let me break truth. Let where there is pain, I'll comfort you. Where there is silence, let me sing praise. Where there's despair, let me bring hope. Where there is blindness, let me bring sight. Where there is darkness, let me bring light. These words I speak, granted that they not seek to be heard, but to hear, to be consored, but to consore, not to be seen, but to see, to be loved, but to love. When we give love, we will receive where we forgive love we will repeat repeat when it is dying will be released make me an instrument of peace
What, what child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Who angels greet with anthem sweet while shepherds watch for keeping? Whom shepherds guard and angels sing Haste, haste to bring him life The babe, the son of Mary So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh Come, peasant king, to own him. The king of kings salvation brings. Let loving hearts enthrone him. This, this is Christ the king, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. The babe, the son of Mary. of the master's hand. Twas bought it battered and scarred, and the auctioneer thought it scarcely worth his while to waste much time on the old violin, but he held it up with a smile. What am I bidden, give, fo give folks, good folks, he cried. Who will start the bidding for me? A dollar? A dollar. Then two. Only two? Two dollars. And who'll make it three? Three dollars once, three dollars twice, going for three. But no, from the room far back, a gray-haired man came forward and picked up the bow. Then wiping the dust from the old violin and tightening the loose strings, he played a melody pure and sweet, as sweet as the caroling angel sings. The music ceased and the auctioneer, with a voice that was quiet and low, said, what am I bidden for the old violin? And he held it up with the bow. A thousand dollars, and who'll make it two? Two thousand, and who'll make it three? Three thousand once, three thousand twice, and going and gone, said he. The people cheered, but some of them cried, we do not quite understand. What changed its worth? Swift came the reply, the touch of the master's hand. And many a man with life out of tune and battered and scarred with sin is auctioned cheap to the thoughtless crowd, much like the old violin. A mess of pottage, a glass of wine, a game, and he travels on. He's going once and going twice, he's going and almost gone. But the master comes, and the foolish crowd never can quite understand the worth of a soul and the change that's wrought by the touch of the master's hand. His praises one day when sin was as black as could be. Jesus. 
Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, I example is here. The word became flesh and the light shined among us, his glory revealed. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified, freely forever. One day One day they led him up Calvary's mountain. One day they nailed him to die on a tree. Suffering anguish, despised and rejected. Bearing our sins, my Redeemer is He. The hand that healed nations stretched out on a tree and taught the nails for me. Living, He loved me. Dying, He saved me. Buried, He carried my sins far away. Rising, He justified. One day the grave could conceal him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. Then he arose over death he had conquered. Now is ascended, my Lord, evermore. Death could not hold him, the grave could not keep him from rising again. far away, rising he justified, freely forever, one day he's coming, a oh, glorious day, a oh, glorious day. One day the skies with His glories will shine. Wonderful day, my beloved one, bring it. My Savior Jesus is mine. Living, He loved me. Dying, He saved me. Buried, He carried my sins far away. Rising, He justified.
save our sons and daughters. Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? You kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. child you're holding is the great I am. Oh, Lord, I 
bring an offering to you. I bring an offering to worship to your King. No one on earth deserves the praises that I sing. Jesus, may you receive the honor that you're due. Oh Lord, I bring an offering to you. We bring an offering to you. What I have to give to you cannot be bought or sold. It can't be wrapped up in a box or tied with strings of gold. It isn't perfect and you'll see it isn't even new. But Jesus, it's the only treasure I can give to you. Me, my gift is me. All I am and all I'll ever be. I'm not ashamed for the world to see that it's me. My gift is me. Jesus, you're the greatest gift the world will ever know. Coming down from heaven just to live your love below. With all that you have done for me, the least that I can do is give all that I know of me to all I know of you. Me, my gift is me. All I am and all I'll ever be. I'm not ashamed for the world to see that it's me. My gift is me. Of all the gifts man could give it's nice to know that i can give his favorite gift the one that thrills him so me my gift is me all i am and all i'll ever be i'm not ashamed It's me, my gift is me, me, my gift is me. Feel that for 
Jesus.